and then I'm also um, maybe uh, since MCM is on on the panel, if they could um, post it to Facebook or some other place. Um, I was just advised to put it as publicly available as possible, so that in the event that this is declared a public meeting, that it's a legal public meeting. Okay, and now I'm going to start recording. And welcome to the 45th daily briefing. Now, uh, Yamhill yeah. County Leaders Talk, uh, Town Hall and Press Conference. And today, um, all, we, we don't have, uh, we have many special guests as opposed to one special guest. Um, so we have Shannon Buckmaster from the uh, Shehalem Chamber of Commerce. We have Julia Graham from the Shehalem, uh, the McMindle Chamber of Commerce. Yes. We've got Mayor Hill of uh, McMindle. We've got Commissioner Rick Olson of uh, the Yamho County. And we have Sheriff uh, Tim Swenson. And then we have Mayor Isla Skyberg, who may just be listening in. Um, but the questions that I have for you today um, for uh, elected officials are, um, how is your community doing with the stay at home order and the social distancing in the workplace specifically? Because uh, I've heard a lot of comments from people around that one. Uh, I will ask the sheriff about um, the travel papers uh, myth that goes around out there. And then I'd love to have um, uh, Joya and Shannon talk both if they can about uh, unemployment claims and how that process is going or what people need to know. Um, and then in the business community, um, some updates for the business community out there, especially around how people who are spread out throughout the county and aren't members of the chamber can access resources. Because that's come up a lot is if I'm not a member, how do I know? Um, and then um, I'll uh, talk about personal protective equipment when we get to my time. But um, Sheriff, would you be willing to start? Yeah, let me give me it myself off mute. Perfect. Yeah, so uh, I know that there's a lot of people that are in the understanding that they have to carry some paperwork or something to prove that they are essential. And that's the reason why they're out traveling around. And I can tell you that um, if there is, they, they haven't shared that with me or anybody else in the state of Oregon, um, because that's not something that is required uh, for individuals. I can tell you that there have been uh, sheriffs across the, uh, across the county, and across, I should say, across the state, uh, where individuals are complaining, saying they're being stopped and asked for their papers. Every one of those incidences, uh, we've been able to track down. Uh, several of them are just uh, individuals who are late for work, and they gave their boss uh, the reason why they were stopped was because they were asked for paperwork, and they were actually stopped for speeding or some other type of uh, reasoning. Um, but I can tell you that uh, we don't have staff out there stopping people just because they're out uh, driving around. Uh, so I think that the most important uh, piece that we've been uh, dealing with, and I think a lot of people have had a little bit of question on our jail facility and the safety and security of uh, citizens with the, uh, the population we have in our jail right now. Um, I can tell you that the population is really based off of several things. Uh, the Supreme Court Justice in the state of Oregon gave a directive out to all of the um, people. Oh, my daughter brought me a snack. Uh, all the people um, in the community that uh, across the state, the Supreme Court Justice basically said, you need to look at your pretrial population and you need to look at the people that are currently sentenced in your facility and you need to uh, research who can be in and who can be let out. That directive was sent to the, uh, all presiding judges in every county. So the decision to get people out of our facility was a, uh, primarily pushed by the courts uh, in conversation with the district attorney, a community justice director, and then ultimately our office uh, to make sure that the people that we're releasing are still gonna be safe to be reintegrated into the community. Uh, so it's not us just saying, okay, we're gonna let people out because uh, we don't want you anymore. Um, it is a very uh, strategic way of doing that, but 
it's for very specific reasons because if you have a population um, and you have someone come into our facility that's infected, uh, that is going to be um, basically the same outcome as a cruise ship. And uh, now you have all these individuals isolated in our facility and that's just not something. And the majority of the people that are in our facility are part of that vulnerable population that do have underlying medical issues that we don't want uh, to um, put in a position where they're going to be um, possibly exposed. Um, but other than that, um, our office is just continuing to do our thing. Um, a lot of my staff are doing the social distancing. Uh, a lot of my command staff are working from home uh, using uh, technology uh, to be our benefit. And uh, it's kind of interesting how much work you can actually get done uh, in that type of uh, atmosphere. It's just a lot different than what we're used to. So uh, we're just going to keep on doing what we're doing and go from there. Great, great. Um, thank you, Sheriff. I, um, I, I saw in the paper today that uh, both the Sanium Correctional uh, Facility in Salem and Marion County um, had some positive tests um, at their jail. Um, and it was sobering and it made me realize, you know, why, I mean, I knew, but it, it made me really grateful for the steps you took. Um, and maybe those, maybe they took all of them too, and I'm sure that they do, um, but uh, way to go with that, for getting that step going. Yep. Um, so Joya um, has a question for you, Sheriff. That I don't yeah. know if you can no, I, yeah, I saw that. I. I do know that there are a handful of individuals that are being held out at uh, different federal prisons that have made requests uh, for uh, release early, um, primarily because of medical conditions. Um, I don't know of any uh, inmates out at our actual prison that actually have been granted that right, but I do know that there's a handful that have been asking for it. Okay, thanks. Did that answer your question, Joya? Yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, Commissioner uh, Commissioner Olson, do you would you be up for answering the question? Um, how is the community doing about social distancing in the state? Whoa, that's some good feedback. Yeah. Commissioner, uh, every, everybody, every. I've seen uh, talk to. I think the community is very doing distance. Matter of fact, most of the stars uh, or most of the stores you're seeing have it all lined out by check counter. But what we, all my experience is, is most the stores you go into, if they have uh, five or six check lines, they only have one open. Uh, they're encouraging everybody to go to uh, the electronic checkout if they have electronic checkout. We found a couple of places in McMinnville after talking to some of the employees that if you take your own bags into the store to bag, uh, your recycled bags, they will not pack your stuff in your bags. You are required to pack. Uh, your own bags or you're required to get the bag from them. But there's a couple that have actually waived the fee, the five cent fee on the bags and will give you new paper for bags. As far as the other social distancing, we haven't uh, noticed any difference except every seems to be obtaining the six difference. Uh, I don't want to do stores like Walmart, how once around the aisles you maintain, once you get up anywhere near the checkout, uh, it's uh, maintained in matter of fact, when you go into Walmart, you can't even go over where the check stands are. You have to go all the way back and go down an aisle. And then when you they have it blocked off, then when you check in, they have one aisle down the middle that has six foot stickers on it. So there might be 10, 12 people um, in that line going back to the middle, middle of the aisle. But everybody we ran into, uh, 
I can't talk about the restaurants, of course, because no in the restaurants are going, but I think fairly well the town's doing pretty good with social distancing. Great, great. Thank you. So do you want to hear a question and part of that question, Casey? Um, I was just about to ask uh, Commissioner Sarah if I believe she Blair. is. Oh, sorry. Can anybody hear me? Yeah. No, but, but I'm going to go to Commissioner Starrett and ask her um, what she would like to add or speak to the community about, because I think we figured out how to unmute. Yeah. So, check, uh, Commissioner Starrett. My audio. Well, it could be the Chromebook I'm using. But uh, other than that, I don't know why it's email. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes, I, this, is, this is an interesting question. Um, so we're just going to talk about the social distancing or any other updates from other calls we had today. Any other updates from calls would be great. Um, I think I was on the AOC one, and I would love to have you share your thoughts if that was one that you were on too. Okay, so if you were on that, I'll let you cover that. When I was on the, I think I was the only one from the county on the economic recovery briefing with the county and tribal government this Perfect. morning with Penny and Jody. And interesting stuff. Um, Commissioner Cameron shared how one business owner shared with him that he spent all day filling out that SBA loan and then went to a bank who said, oh, it's the wrong form. So we're, we're seeing some, they're trying to work out some of the kinks there. Um, and uh, the other thing that I, I suggest, I don't know. And I would love to have you share your thoughts you were on here. Okay, if you were on that, I'll let you cover that one. I was on the, I think we're getting oh, a repeat of something. Um, All right, Commissioner, uh, I'm going to I'm going to go on um, and ask the the mayors to discuss um, some of these issues because I can't hear you for some reason. Can others hear? Did you hear me? Oh, okay, good. We can hear you now. Okay, um, I don't know if you got the question was that on the economic recovery briefing with county and tribal this morning, there was a question from one of the commissioners in Marion County that he's hearing that those figuring out the uh, SBA forms are a little, a little tough, but also uh, they're going to the banks with their filled out forms and being told they've filled out the wrong form. So they're working on, on some of that as far as trying to get that. The other suggestion I, I would make to the community is uh, there was a little mention of an industry, a trade group uh, offering grants uh, to professional um, uh, professional uh, beauty operators. Um, so check with your, I would suggest you check with your trade association and see if they've got any kind of help for, for your particular industry. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, and along those lines, Commissioner Starrett, I, um, I saw an, an article in the Oregonian that um, that explained all the, the uh, documents that you need before you start your application. Because if you don't have them right, it'll kick you back out to the beginning. And Joya, I guess, knows what I'm talking about. Um, Joya, do you want to do your update now and then you can actually talk about that? Sure. I can certainly do that unless the mayor wants to go. I'm whatever. I can be really fast. And, and then perhaps, okay. perhaps um, uh, Commissioner Starrett can add to your thoughts too. Okay, so yeah, the SBA loans. Um, so let me fill you in on the banks. <clears throat> so we were told by the Treasury that today all the banks were going to have the money and they were going to be able to give out loans. That is not the case for most banks. Uh, because last night, very late, they got 
an 80 page document or something crazy like that, uh, basically giving them all of the criteria that they needed to follow to actually do this program. Uh, so banks are furiously trying to implement, but I am told many will not have money until next Friday. Um, unless, unless a bank can pull their act together in three days. Um, and you know, when you've got multiple branches, it's not easy to do that. So, uh, the likelihood is that we will be seeing money next Friday, not today. Uh, but that doesn't mean people should not apply. And you need to make sure that you do the right form. So there's the idle form, which is the economic injury disaster loan. And then, um, and then there's the PPP, which is the paycheck protection program, which is a separate application. Uh, and that goes to the bank. And then the, um, the SBA EIDL loan, uh, application goes to the SBA. It's very complicated. Um, and it is, uh, we're happy to help people walk through that. I want to, Two other things, um, our local um, economic, economic development organizations, MEDP, MDA, the Chamber, the City, and um, Visit McBinville are working on a web page where all of our businesses can post what they're doing, whether they're open or those kinds of things. Uh, so that's in the process. They, they uh, buildable through this together in three days. They did an amazing job. Uh, so you can expect, hopefully, that's going to go live in the next couple of days. And then we're looking at other opportunities. I know Shannon's going to talk about some stuff that's happening in Newburgh. And so um, we are looking at what we might be able to be doing uh, to help our local businesses. Um, you can always look at our chamber website. Tons of resources there for anybody who wants it. And if anybody has a question, they can always contact the chamber. The phone is ringing to my cell. They can always call and ask. Um, you had asked about unemployment claims. Those continue to rise. The whole idea of what is being um, done with the uh, loans and the PPP program, the P Paycheck Protection Program, was to prevent businesses from laying off their staff. So when this, um, so when this all comes, you know, we all get back to work, we don't have to go find people to hire. That's the whole idea, uh, because we can get right back on uh, that horse and start riding again. Um, and then uh, on our both of our chambers, uh, Chris Eiler from the U.S. Chamber did a presentation the other day. Uh, on Wednesday uh, and talked about the SBA loans and the PPP program and and the link is on our chamber websites if anybody is interested I'm done thank you unless anyone has a question uh, Joy, this is Mary I, I, uh, uh, yes Commissioner uh, and and Joy, just real quick on the call we found out there is a business navigator website with a lot of resources it's the Oregon for biz.com um, if that helps. Thank you. I will um, make sure we look at that and add it to our website. I appreciate that information. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And Commissioner Starrett, um, I realized that I jumped to Joya. Did you have anything more from the phone call? I'm happy to have you share more. Just real quick, uh, there are just a lot of discussion about what happens, uh, what's the recovery strategy. We've got, you know, that's got to be a, a whole new discussion. And then um, really just looking at, at budgets, the state budget and our local budgets are going to be impacted and we're going to have to really um, be thinking in terms of that. But at this particular point, um, it's just getting those resources out and I think they did a really good job on that business navigator website I just gave you. Fantastic. Thank you, and thank you, Joya. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Um, Shannon, can you uh, talk to us a little bit about what's happening in Trujillo yeah. Valley? And then specifically, um, I, the um, retooling efforts, if you can share anything that's happening there. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, thank you so much. There's a little bit of feedback in my ear, so if I, I'm sorry. Um, both chambers are returning to social events virtually. So McMinnville Area Chamber of Commerce hosted their greeters this morning. It was very successful. I heard great things, especially from our businesses who are mutual members of both chambers. So we're following that lead, redeveloping it. For us, that does include greeters, chamber after hours, and hopefully our Newburgh Perk uh, development series. So if we talk about you know, what the recovery process look, looks like, we're also looking to address the psychological needs of our business community, right? So keeping us connected, keeping the positivity so that, especially as people have obstacles with things like forms and loans, they're not giving up altogether, that we're still building that collective community spirit. So 
thank you, Joya, for testing that this morning and sharing uh, with our chamber so that we can do this together. Um, what I can also share about the unemployment benefits, they are live online. So if you're a gig worker, a contractor, or self-employed, you can apply right now through the state's unemployment benefits, and that's on the state's website. Uh, I did personally walk through the website yesterday. It's very confusing. They haven't updated the application with any of the exception language for those self-employed people, nor have they updated it with any of the COVID-19 or coronavirus language. So it's still your straightforward unemployment application. So just as I was able to get through it, if if there was a question that, that didn't quite fit, you either leave it blank and move forward and wait for additional information. But we did verify with Chris Eiler, I believe it was Chris Eiler, that the unemployment benefits are live. So people can start applying right now, even if banks aren't able to manage the PPP loans. So that's uh, an opportunity that people should do. Connected to that slightly, if there is any chance either professionally or personally that you're anticipating either a state refund or a federal refund on your income taxes, it's in your advantage to file as soon as possible and to e-file as well. Uh, what we're hearing is that with all of the logistical challenges that uh, the infrastructure burden that the state and federal processes are facing right now, uh, getting a refund with a paper filing process, a hard copy filing process may take three to six months. And even now, uh, an electronic benefit is still several weeks out. So we do want to say, you know, if that's a source of income for any of our businesses or any of our families, do that immediately. Don't put it off. Um, and then we also had the question too about how non-members throughout Yamhill County can access business resources. Uh, so if they're not a member of Joya's chamber, our chamber, what does that look like? Joya and I very uh, early on in this process decided to lift restrictions on non-members accessing any of our services. So of course, following any of our chamber events on social media, that's free, that's easy. You just click, like, follow our pages, we're releasing our videos through social media, our links for other engagement opportunities. Our websites are open access. Both chamber websites are not only promoting what's available for commerce and uh, retail and services as, as well, but restaurants, takeout, but then we each have a separate designated uh, COVID-19 response page as well. So those resources are freely available. Joya is picking up her calls by uh, through, they're, they're coming directly to her cell phone. I'm also, personally serving, servicing any member of our community who contacts me either through email or through my cell phone and I'm getting the messages from the office as well. So you have two, two people um, certainly who are committed to serving our business community at, at, in any capacity and both of, uh, both of our chambers have been able to retain our staff during this time as well. So we're supported, we're here. Don't let, don't let that, uh, that fence of are we, are we, are we or are we not members stand in the way of getting the support and the information that your business needs to thrive? We're here for community. That's what we do. Any questions? Questions? Okay. Um, thank you very much, Shannon. Um, that's definitely very helpful. And uh, I believe it was Commissioner Olson this yesterday who uh, expressed at our meeting that um, he, he felt like um, business and government, we're going to have a different relationship as we leave and go into the, as we leave the pandemic and go into the future. And I appreciate that because I can see it here. Yeah. Okay. Um, mayors, we have uh, Mayor Hill of McMinnville, we have Mayor Russ of Dundee, and Mayor Skyberg of Willamina. Mayor Skyberg, what would you like to tell your residents and um, businesses? She's unmuted. <laughs> okay, well, let's go to um, to Mayor Russ. Um, what would you like to tell people in Dundee, both um, about the stay-at-home order, um, social distancing in the workplace, um, and and how to help businesses and your constituents? Now I'm unmuted. All right, we can hear you. 
so actually things are uh, I think for Dundee not so bad I haven't heard any, any actual cases or such um, businesses in Dundee you know could use support Lumpy's is doing takeout and if anybody's had a Lumpy's program, you know it's good stuff you should go get it um, and uh, of course the, the small stores and stuff our wine tasting rooms they're not open they're not an essential thing um, but other than that, we did declare a state of emergency in Dundee at our last council meeting, uh, which was in the beginning of March. Um, and then we skipped one. We'll be having one in the upcoming week and probably skipping again after that. But we feel we've got to maintain some level of business for the city. Uh, but so, but by declaring the state of emergency, we put ourselves in position to make sure that we can take care of whatever we need to as the city of Dundee. Um, also there's, uh, you know, food is, uh, there's still, if people need it, the uh, promise pantry is still open and they're maintaining, uh, social distancing by letting people stay in their car while they bring stuff out to them. And so, uh, and they've got a lot, they've, they've had a lot of extra donations this year. So they're, they're really covered to support the emergency. Um, that's all I've really got to say. Great questions for the mayor at Dundee. One other thing um, that I wanted to add is SBA opened the window for the loans today online. Uh, it's covid19relief.sba.gov. I'm in the middle of filling out an application on there. It seems pretty simple so far. Going to your bank isn't necessarily going to get you there. I think this is what needs to be done. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for those words. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go on to Mayor Hill and then Commissioner Olson and Shannon Buckmaster both want to add some comments. So I'm going to return to them um, after uh, Mayor Hill. Thank you, Mayor Russ. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, let me just update, uh, as I do on all of our calls, uh, this morning on our LOC call, it was told that we had about 17,000 tests that have been accomplished in the state of Oregon with uh, 826 as of yesterday morning that uh, had tested positive, 21 deaths. In Yamhill County, just to update, uh, we've got, um, uh, we've got uh, uh, 464 that have tested uh, negative and 18 that are positive with three deaths. Um, a representative from uh, OHA this morning indicated that our social distancing has uh, really had a, a positive impact on the trends of those that have been testing uh, positive. So our doing what the governor's asked us to do is, is having an effect at this point. Uh, this last uh, week, uh, we had an opportunity to meet with the, uh, the hospital here in McMinnville. Our fire department's been working with their emergency department, but we were able to connect with the administrative offices. With the lack of uh, elective surgeries, uh, the hospital has a lot of capacity right now. They have a four in isolation, 10 rooms being used, so there's a lot of capacity, and they're just preparing uh, for the event that could happen or may not happen, but they're uh, dealing with things and are prepared. As I, uh, they have the big tent out front that can be used for overflow. Um, and so we're going to be meeting with the hospital uh, on an every two week basis just to keep ourselves uh, aware of what's happening there. Uh, from a homelessness standpoint, just to update everyone, um, uh, the Yamhill Miss. Uh, uh, a rescue mission is open. They are housing 50 plus in their three buildings. Uh, I know we're looking at uh, the Baptist Church in town, looking at possibly opening their doors for individuals. And then we're working with YCAP and with um, the, the county and the city at the possibility of the community center taking about 20 individuals there. A lot of logistical things that need to be happening. But with this cold weather at night, we're very cognizant of trying to find places to, to house those who are very, very vulnerable. I'm going to throw out something that I uh, had an opportunity to talk to a, an attorney in town. And so for uh, Shannon and for uh, Joya, uh, this attorney has had a couple of their very uh, successful businesses come to them to help them with the SBA uh, 
loan process. And uh, the attorney said that uh, they have filled out three forms so far, and it's always the wrong form. And this this attorney firm is really trying to become a specialist in that area. So I, I throw that out and say that maybe if we could get a number of business together and have an attorney look at the process for them and help them through that may be a, a, a very a cost effective way to have a legal uh, team behind that it's not a burden on anyone and, and keeping on top of that. Uh, two other things that I would have. Um, in the news register today, you're going to find an article on uh, uh, bringing our reusable bags into the grocery stores. And we've been dealing with that with the city for a little while, but understanding that our ordinance has been superseded by the uh, state statute now, and we have no control over the use or non-use of plastic bags. But uh, Nicole did a really good job in the news register. The, is being delivered today talking about the the do's and the don'ts of bringing your bag in and i think the city is going to support the information that's coming up from that standpoint and then lastly just mcminnville water and light i shared with you at our last call that we have sent out a COVID-19 newsletter, we broadcasted that out to all of our customers that were using our smart pay, but we will now be uh, enclosing uh, in our uh, monthly stuffer the same message with a message from myself uh, sharing the good things that we're doing. And if we've got a few extra dollars that we can help uh, customer to customer. And so that's an update that uh, we have here at McMinnville. All right, thank you very much, Mayor. Um, so the, um, Mayor Skyberg, are you available and would you like to say anything? All right, before we uh, go on to Wendy um, at PGE to update us on our utilities uh, for a large portion, not all, but a large portion of the county, um, I believe that Shannon wanted, Shannon Buckmaster wanted to clarify something. Yes, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I forgot one small, uh, not small, I forgot a big update. So thank you for a chance to get back on. So the city of Newburgh is going to be releasing an emergency grant uh, program beginning next week. So we hope that the information will be finalized and out on Tuesday after council reviews it. And, um, and so we should actually be closer to dispersing funds. What that looks like for the city of Newburgh, we have $100,000 that we pulled from our general fund. We're going to offer grants up to $2,500 per business. So this could help 40 businesses in our community. Uh, what we're requiring, a Newburgh address. They employ 15 or fewer people at a full-time equivalency. So even our restaurants or hospitality partners who have several part-time stu uh, part students, part-time employees would be eligible for this process. They need to have a current business license Newburgh business license in good standing have operated for more than a year and are locally owned and not a franchise. And so that's the beginning eligibility. We are putting together um, a committee of business people from our community to review those grant applications so that we make sure um, it's an equitable process, a fair process, and we have a good disbursement of funds. But that that's something that the city is rolling out officially next week. Any questions on that? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And then um, two other clarifications. Joya, you had a couple of comments. Can you add to them now? Oh, sure, I'm happy to. Thank you for asking. Um, two things. So um, there is a difference between the SBA loan, um, the EIDL, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, which you have to get through the SBA and you need to do that. If you want the Paycheck Protection Program, you must go through a bank. Uh, and so that's, there's definitely a distinction between the two. I wanted to make sure that was clear uh, because I wasn't sure that I completely explained that correctly. Um, two, one other thing, um, we're gonna schedule a, um, a Zoom with our bankers here in McMinnville uh, to have them maybe work some, um, uh, help some folks through the process, answer questions that they might have about the PPP because we're not gonna get money till next week. And the other thing, um, we're gonna try to get the SBDC or the SBA to come and do a presentation as well uh, so that we can people can understand what the questions are and maybe which one they should be applying for and mayor um mayor hill i heard that our code compliance 
staff, um, Claudia and Nick, are going to go around and, and, and um, pick up um, medications for people who cannot um, leave their homes to go pick up their medications. I don't know if you have a moment to speak about that, but I, I think I saw it on Facebook, but don't hold me to that. Or maybe Heather told me. I, I'm, you can't always believe Facebook, but um, <laughs> I think I heard that. And uh, that that would be a great uh, service if they're able to do that. I've not had the opportunity to talk to Jeff yesterday or today. Monday we have our meeting, so our next meeting I will update everyone on the particulars if that's happening. Okay, and then Mayor Russ uh, of Dundee has, a, I think, a follow-up or a question. Well, yeah, I just was wondering, um, she kind of hinted on it, are those two programs mutually exclusive? Um, I guess the details probably somebody's got to get somewhere else, but if she knows anything about that. So uh, they work together, uh, but you can't you can't use the monies for the same thing. So if you do the PPP program, um, then you can't use the monies that you get from your SBA loan to to pay for the for your paycheck protection. So they are they are in conjunction with each other, and yet they and there's a puppy in the window. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so they work together, but you cannot use them uh, to pay the same bills. Does that, did that answer your question? All except for I'm not sure I'm getting a puppy. <laughs> Shannon's puppy that. was in the wind, in the mirror. It was very cute. <laughs> Thank you. The Pomeranian, I learned. Uh, okay, great. Thank you very much. Commissioner Olson had one more clarification or comment before we move on to Wendy Valise from PGE. Commissioner Olson. Yeah. I, we cannot hear you. Okay, um, this is Commissioner Olson again. I want to go over <clears throat> Can you hear me now? This is Commissioner Olson. I want to go over something that uh, has been mentioned a couple of times and with uh, something that Commissioner Starrett mentioned this morning. And I'm going to, uh, you'll still be able to hear me. Uh, an update came this morning from uh, uh, Senator Boquist on the PPP information. And actually, the um, a link is if you go to the, and I'll go through it, the SBA.gov paycheck protection slash find that will give you information his email is here's a quick update on the loan program in oregon some loans have already been approved after being sh been in shortly after 1201 sba system has a challenge this more act hoping the loan process runs smoothly more as it becomes available well anyway what happens is the sba and i'll go to, i'll go to that link and, and treat, uh, to talk just a minute about it. And this may be a little bit different than what Commissioner Stair was saying this morning. It's bringing up that now. Okay, the Paycheck Program Con uh, check, if you go to that, it basically tells you about the banks and they're recommending loan information, who can apply loan details and forgiveness and other assistance and lender forms and guidance. They're definitely recommending both the SBA and Senator Boquist that you deal with either credit unions or small community banks because $875 million was allocated specifically through the banking system for uh, small community banks and credit unions. And according to the information that uh, Senator Boquist put out this morning, that, that some of the local small banks have actually processed some loans as of uh, nine o'clock this morning. But that again is the PPP program. And it's, it's, done through your, uh, it's done through your bank. It's not like the IDRL, it's done through SBA. And again, there's, if you go to, uh, if you go to the, um, excuse me one moment. Coronavirus, it talks a lot about the, uh, everything and the, the, uh, the, the actual uh, link is sba.gov 
slash funding dash programs. And under that, you will see the funding programs. You will see the loans. And under loans, you'll see the uh, coronavirus relief. And it will talk about all about the PPP program and who to apply for. They say a lot of larger banks won't be ready to uh, uh, actually be able to process until probably two weeks from now. But a lot of the smaller community banks and the credit unions are taking advantage of that $875 million. And they are, pro not all, but they, a lot of them are processing, loan, processing loans immediately. And that's, for, that's just from uh, Commissioner um, uh, Boquist, or uh, Senator Boquist. Okay, thank you very much, Commissioner. And yeah. I'm, if I'm a little distracted, I'm trying to get Representative Post on right now. So we'll see. But Wendy Valise uh, from PGE, uh, what things would you like to uh, your, your customers in the county to know? Um, well, I'd like them to know that um, we're working right now, um, many of our materials in terms of energy assistance and working one, all of our communications that we are not disconnecting to anybody, those are out and we're, we're not, those are all in Spanish um, and my understanding that um, they will also be happening in multiple languages. So um, that work is happening now and they're trying to get that out by next week. Um, so I will be distributing that to folks on this call so that they have that information if people are, are served by PGE that they have information about how we want to work with them. We're not disconnecting, but it, I know there's a lot of concern about that and we want to work with them. The other piece that I wanted to just share is that PGE has gone to staggered um, shifts with our line crews. And these are the folks that are out there um, maintaining the service. And that is for the health of our line crews to maintain the six, six feet distance from each other. Um, and so uh, that was just implemented a few days ago. Um, the work is continuing. The other piece is I just want to thank uh, all of the local elected who serve on the LOC or the ALC or the OMA. Um, two days ago, we submitted a, with the support of AOC, LOC and OMA, support, uh, submitted a um, letter to uh, support letter for $30 million for energy assistance for low income customers who will be disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. And so we'll wait to see where that goes and if 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 that is granted then that will um hopefully immediately funnel to those who are struggling right now that's it thank you very much wendy are there any questions for uh wendy or for for pge and power in general and I would like to note that PG has also done some great donations to the both the Oregon Food Bank and to Whitecaps Food Bank. And so I'm going to do a little. Thank you, Chair Chair Kula. Uh, Chair Kula, um, uh, I know you wouldn't. You're not the kind of person to uh, say anything. You're a quiet, quiet leader. But everyone should know that uh, Commissioner Kula made a request at the highest level of the company for YCAP uh, and raise concern about their current uh, supplies there. And so PGE is making an emergency donation to YCAP uh, at Commissioner Kula's uh, urging, as well as uh, we also know that they have a partnership with Oregon Food Bank and also um, raised our concern for reaching rural Oregon with the Oregon Food Bank in particular and the county and the Caps Food Bank. So um, thank you, Commissioner Kula, for advocating for your community and we're, we were pleased to help just a little bit. Uh, thank you, but I think what I did was I went like this. Uh, so, you know, I try not to do that very much. Uh, this is what Mayor Russ is doing right now too, see? Um, okay, thank you very much, Wendy. Um, we have Representative Post on the line. I think we figured it out. And I think he knows how to unmute and mute himself. So uh, Representative Post, welcome. And what would you like to tell uh, your constituents in the community and how are businesses responding to the um, new social distancing requirements and anything else that you want to talk to them about? So I'm actually on right now. We can hear you. Can you see me? 
No. <laughs> okay, this is technology that's far beyond my scope. I'm used to a microphone and nobody there. Um, let's see. You know, pretty much uh, the, the, the cool thing is uh, the, the caucuses have been updated by our uh, congressional representatives. So uh, Congressman Walden was just on a call with us yesterday and really filled us in on uh, the, um, the, the protection plan, the, the employee protection plan, and all the other plans and all the federal stimulus. So really, that's what I've been spending all my time getting that information out. Is how businesses can go. Although I, I found out today that there are at least two major banks that are not doing it, uh, Bank of America and Chase. I think. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of digging into that. But really, at this point, um, I'm trying to just disseminate the federal package and what it's going to do. As far as the state legislature, um, there's kind of a, uh, how should we put it? There's some disagreement and it's not partisan. It's sort of unpartisan or both partisans or something of not wanting to have a session. Um, and that is because there is $1.63 billion coming to Oregon. And that's, by the way, just for the state. If any major metropolitan area, which the only one in this case that has to be 500000 or more, would be Portland, they can actually apply for another 45% of that $1.63 billion based on the percentage of their population of the entire population of the state of Oregon. The question that we've been asking is, is that Portland proper or is that Metro Portland? If it's Portland proper, it's about 17%. If it's Portland Metro, then it's about 27% of that $1.63 billion. So that's still being worked on. So that's kind of, so, so the question is, should the legislature meet and, and take money out of the state budget when there's 1.63 billion coming from the feds? And I know there will be needs come 2021 out of our state budget. And our state budget is going to go down exponentially, as we all know, from revenue, uh, the lack of revenue over the next few months. So I think that's kind of where I'm at. And that's, that's kind of just what I've been playing with the last few days. Well, thank you, Representative, very much. Um, that's something that I've been thinking a lot about, too, is what, what's going to happen with that money relative to revenue and expenses for the state. So thank you for raising that question. Um, folks on the, um, the panel, questions for Representative Post? Oh, come on, he's a radio personality. He speaks so well, when, and, and we can't even see him. He still has one for I have a question for uh, Representative Post. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm unmuted. So you can all hear me. Okay, uh, the question I have for Representative Post is looking at one of the options for the uh, kicker, the executive order allows uh, the kicker to be placed elsewhere elsewhere and for use and not go back to the um, the citizens if they didn't care uh, can you tell us a little bit more in on that information I'm sorry I missed a lot of that but I think I caught enough that um, the question was did did in so there's no executive order. Has, there's no executive representative post is muted. No, I'm unmuted right now. We can hear him. Okay. As far as I know, there has been no executive order that has anything to do with the kicker. How do I get on camera? That if you want to see me, I don't. How do, I don't know how to do that. I, uh, representative, yeah, I, can, I can hear you. Representative. I think you have to, uh, I think you've joined with your audio, but without your video. Okay, but one of the options, the, uh, and I think that in, uh, uh, if you touch center, your screen, you can start your video. Do you see a camera button any place? Touch the screen first or tap, click. And then down at the bottom. Oh, he's off. Uh, there he is. 
I just made you join as a panelist. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> go ducks. Go uh, frogs. <laughs> Okay, uh, does anybody else have questions for Representative Post? Um, Commissioner Olson, did you, were you able to finish your question? Oh, there he is. Rick, you sound like you're calling from outer space. <laughs> We need to get him a jet pack for some better connectivity. <laughs> well, I guess I had a follow-up question for representative post. Um, do you see the legislature taking any action to use the ticker for, for uh, COVID-19 COVID uh, response or use of it in the legislature. Yeah, I know it. All that. I'll get it. How about that? Well, as soon as I get my camera for my big PC, instead of using this old Chromebook. But uh, do you see the legislature, legislature taking any actions on redirecting the kicker? I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm getting like every third word. He's muted. Uh, okay, I, this Rick, is what no, I'm understanding. Rick is asking if you, if the state is going to be using the kicker to help any, you know, use that money for the state instead of holding on to it and just use that <laughs> money. Casey. Okay, so as far as I know, can you unmute him? As far as I know, um, on the kicker, um, everything's progressing as normal. The kicker, I mean, for instance, myself, I already filed my taxes. Okay, now I think we can hear you. Okay, I, just, just to make it a little easier, I've muted Commissioner Olson. Sorry. This will go down in history as me shutting him up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I won't tell anybody. <laughs> um, so as, I hope this helps. Helps. Um, as far as I know, everything's going forward as normal with the kicker. The kicker is being returned to the taxpayers as it should be. Um, like I said, I, I, I did my tax. I, I'm obsessive compulsive. So the minute I get my um, W-4 to whatever the thing's called, and every, I, all my paperwork in front of me, I do my federal and state taxes. It could be February 3rd, it could be April 12th, whatever, when I have everything, I file my taxes. So the fact that they extended both state and federal to July 15th, I'm kind of screwed, but that's okay. I, I, I'm obsessive compulsive and I do that. I do my taxes the first day I can possibly do them. So I got my kicker. It didn't make much of a difference for me, but I, I got a kicker. Okay, thank you. And then Joya um, has asked me, oh, uh, uh, there's a question about how the state is dealing with the influx of unemployment applications. And if Representative Post can't answer that, I have like a little bit of an answer. Yeah, well, maybe you know more than me. Um, I have I spent an inordinate amount of time on my email, replying to emails to my office and to my personal email and to Facebook messaging that have said, I can't get through to the state employment department. I made 300 calls. I made, I've sent emails. I've done everything. It is so frustrating. And um, I give kudos to Abby in my office. She has been on nonstop emails and phone calls to the employment department saying, can you help us? Can you help us? Can you help us? They're not replying to our office. They're not replying to anybody at this point. So I think they're just overwhelmed. That, that would be my guess. Yeah. So the, um, the, the numbers that I've seen um, were, uh, you know, this, there were 96,000 um, claims uh, in the pre in this last week, um, and of those, 25,000 were addressed or were responded to um, at.
adequately or completely. Um, so that does give you a sense of, um, of this, only this actually got dealt with. Um, but just like Representative Post, um, I got an email from Representative Noble who said, if, you are, if somebody is out there having troubles, call his office or email him. Um, and that, yeah, exactly the same thing. And it, it may not get um, an average citizen out there further up the line, but it'll tell Representative Post and it'll tell Representative Noble what's happening on the ground, right? So you will know at least. And go ahead. Well, I just add, uh, Commissioner Call, that, that it, this is one of the sad realities that I found when I first got into office there was I would get an email from, from Casey and Casey would say, I can't seem to get anybody at Agency X to answer my question. I mean, what's the deal? And this, this is a sad reality. I make one phone call to Agency X and I have the head of the agency sitting in my office in 10 minutes. That should not be. You are no less important than me or more important or anything. We're all the same. We're all citizens of Oregon. And I really detest that. But I'm, I'm sad to break that news to people. That's how state agencies work. The common citizens can't get through. But if the state rep calls, oh, by golly, they, they're real quick to answer. So in the case of this employment situation, even that is not working at this point. Yeah, thank you for that clarification. Um, and I'm glad that you also got to poke the screen a little bit during this meeting. <laughs> oh, yeah, fist. Uh, okay, are there any last questions? I was gonna do a quick update on a few things, um, but, uh, and Sheriff, you got a hand behind you, watch out. Uh, any other clarifications? Okay, um, so uh, public health in Yamhill County, believe it or not, still needs personal protective equipment. So if you're a manufacturer out there, talk to Shannon Buckmaster, Joya Goodrum, Bobby Shawstone at SEDCOR, anybody, and we will help you uh, with retooling as best we can. Um, the second thing is that if you have personal protective equipment, you can drop it off at 412 Northeast Ford Street in McMinnville, um, which is our Yamhill County Public Health building. And they will happily get um, the, the gear to the right place. So if it's something that's appropriate for the sheriff's office, they'll make sure it goes to the sheriff's office, for example. Um, if it needs to go to, is it a face shield? Um, it can go to, the, they'll get it to the right place. And um, apparently even uh, homemade masks um, they will. They can get them to the, to the correct people. Um, the you know the folks who need protection for themselves as opposed to uh, from the public. Yeah. So if you're making masks and you want to take them somewhere, take them to 412 Northeast Ford Street in McMinnville. Um, but remember, stay home as much as you can. Um, flattening the curve is what we need. And um, from the the numbers that I've seen uh, from Senator Boquist. Um, Yamhill County and Oregon um, is doing a good job of it, um, but we need to keep on it. So, um, and I also, I, I like and I'm grateful um, the uh, delicacy with which um, the mandate has been so that business can, can still operate as long as they're observing that six foot distancing. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, I have a one question on clarification on reusable bags uh, from Commissioner Olson. And he has an example, so I'm going to go to unmute him right now. Okay, Commissioner Olson. Okay, I know a lot of you may be having trouble hearing me, but on the reasonable bags, there's one corporation has two supermarkets in McMinnville and one in Newburgh that uh, if you use your recyclable uh, plastic or um, cloth bags, they will not pack. You can use them, they will not uh, every where you have packed. But those same stores, if you want a new paper bag instead, will waive the five dollar charge. In the that's the uh, that's Safeway and Albert. Um, other examples just won't plain. I've ran into stores that just won't even take. They'll charge you five cents. They 
don't allow you to use your plastic or use your recyclable bags. So I think the paper industry is buying this so they can sell more bags. But anyway, that's just an example I wanted to bring up. So you, not all stores will even let you use your um, re, your cloth bags, and some actually make you pack your own stuff into them, and they won't touch them. Okay. One other comment I had is you start seeing, and I think we're seeing it already a couple of places in McMinnville that a lot of drive through are now only accepting credit or debit cards. They will not accept cash. So you don't have any little thing and you put your card in and they will, uh, they'll ring it up and then they'll ask you on added tip. But they, uh, a lot of your drivers are going on only to credit card and debit card. Okay, great. Thank you very much. And you seem so far away, so we'll need to work on that. Uh, I think it's bouncing off the moon right now. Uh, but, but I, I want to say thank you to everybody and for all the folks out there in the community. We are going to get through this, and the people here who are raised are on your side, and we will do it together. So, and Representative Post, thank you for providing all of your perspectives because we know you're with us on this. All right, thank you very much. And I'm going to sign us off unless there's anything more. All right, thank you so much.